Hello, my name is Adam Novak and welcome to Blender Exercise 2.3. We're going to continue with our chess pieces for our chessboard and make our bishop today. By making all our chess pieces, we can use a different modelling style each time we create our next one and progressively increase in complexity learning new techniques. Now let's get straight into it. All the keys that I press can be seen at the bottom left using screencast keys. And the first thing we're going to do is add a background image. You can find this image in the description link below. Once we have added this file, we'll change the viewport orientation which it affects and make sure it only affects the front viewport. The next thing we can do is change its opacity so it can be seen more clearly. And then we can change where it's located in the viewport and by putting 4 into its vertical alignment, it goes straight to its origin, which is why we're using this downloaded image which I've created. Let's add a circle. And let's view the circle from the above by pushing 7 on our numpad. We can increase the viewport screen size by pushing Ctrl and up at the same time and then get rid of the tab on the right by pushing N. By pushing T we can change the amount of vertices this circle has and since we're going to be using subdivisions we can reduce it quite comfortably. Be careful though to use it in multiples of 4 because if we did not it would actually change its relative dimensions which may cause some undesired results. And now we reset its vertices back to 16 and enter the front mode by pushing 1 on the numpad. We will then enter object mode by pushing tab and scale this object up with S. Once we're happy with its position we can left click with the mouse to release it and it'll stay there. Right click is to cancel. We can now begin extruding by pushing E on the keyboard. And we can confine it to the Z axis by pushing Z. Also remember to increment in solid amounts by holding control or control and shift to increment in smaller quantities. And now we continue to extrude, although with this extrusion we want to go to the next overhanging point. This is because we want it to line up exactly and have the exact same size as the ring segment below. If we cut the ring segment in between first and scaled it down and then back up, you'd find that the sizes will not match exactly. So by cutting this ring segment in the middle later, we are able to ensure that this top ring segment and the bottom one are the exact same size. We add this ring loop cut by holding Ctrl and R and left clicking on the edge loop which we like to cut through. Continue making this model using E to extrude, remembering to confine it to the Z axis by clicking Z straight afterwards. Do not spend too much time on detail since we are going to be using a subdivision modifier to be doing this for us. I do like to add ring segments to these long edges here by holding Ctrl and R together and left clicking on the long edges. By doing this we ensure that the geometry of the subdivisions is quite clean. Now might be a good time for you to continue modelling, though with the rest of this there's no reason why you can't create your own geometry and sizes of ring segments. And then we can all share what we've created in the comment section below. It is really important to become familiar with all of the keys we are using here, being the G, R, E the control and R using the ring segments and confining to an axis. These are going to be common tools which we use to create almost all of our models in future. Here's another useful way of confining to an axis. If we've got two ring segments which we'd like to scale up but we don't want to scale it on the Z axis, to confine it to not scale on the Z axis and exclude it when scaling, we can push Shift then Z by doing this, we're excluding the Z axis from our scaling. We'll continue to extrude, and then between this one, I'll add a ring segment to scale it down so it gives it a nice organic look. We'll push tab to exit edit mode, then Z so we can see its solid view. We'll then hold control and push the up arrow to open the properties window again, and add a subdivision modifier. We'll increase the amount of subdivisions we see in the viewport, and then we'll set it to be smooth so it looks really nice. Be careful not to add too many subdivisions to your object. We have not yet filled in this bottom face, so we can select it by Alt and right clicking the bottom ring segment and then pushing F. We can then make this ring segment a lot sharper by pushing Shift and E, and it inputs a value of 0 to 1, which we can use our mouse, or we can simply click the value from 0 to 1 on the keyboard, which I find much easier. Continue to make these ring segments much sharper by adding the creases to the ring segment edges or adding extra ring segments themselves. When adding extra ring segments, whenever practical, move them right down to a previous ring segment next to it. 
then increment in solid quantities away from that. By doing this, if there's any mistakes, you can reduce these ring segments very easily by removing them on top of other rings and removing doubles. Something you may encounter is something I've encountered right here. It's trying to select a ring segment that you cannot see because it's hidden beneath some faces due to subsurfacing. By clicking this option at the top right in the properties, it actually sends the vertices to its current location after the subsurfacing has taken place. It is wise to practice using this, though generally I don't do it much myself. I find it can only cause more errors than I would otherwise encounter. I continue just working my model for the next 10 seconds before I say anything of use. So I'm just going to talk now, so there's something here instead of silence. Another thing you might encounter is having accidentally done an edge crease along some vertical edges, as you can see I've done just here. One way you can get rid of vertical creases and select every vertical edge along a ring segment is to turn on edge selection, as I've done down the bottom. You can then hold Ctrl and Alt and right click an edge, and this will give us every edge along a ring loop, which can be very handy sometimes. And now all we have to do is finish up by adding the top. I'll add the vertices selection mode where you select it after subdivision, so you can see some more problems you might encounter if you've left it on. As I move this up on the Z axis, it shows me that the bottom ring segment is being displaced with it, although in reality it is not. This can sometimes cause overlapping vertices, so whenever modeling, I turn it off. For the bottom edge of our bishop, we just pushed F, and this was okay because it was perfectly flat, and it gave us good enough results. Because the top face, however, is quite organic and it's rounded, if we pushed F on a large circle, the subsurface divisions would give us some quite ugly geometry. That is why it's good practice to extrude the parts of the objects that are being closed and scale them down as small as possible to control it. And now all that's left to finish this bishop is to add our insert or the cut from the top. Let's call it a mouth. We'll add a plane and this is what we're going to use to cut out our object using an inbuilt blender operation called boolean. I'm going to turn the background image back on just so we can get an idea of where the original cut was. Then we're going to enter edit mode and we're going to displace these vertices, all of them, along the X axis so that it's now at its origin center. Then we'll remember to exit edit mode again, pushing tab, and then we can rotate it, remembering to hold control so it goes in increments of 5 degrees and we'll rotate it till we're happy with its position. By making sure we are not in edit mode when we rotate our object, we still have the advantage of being able to access the object's local orientated axes. We can access the local orientated axes by pushing twice the axis we want to transform on. So if we want to transform on a local X axis, we'd push G, then X twice, which will give us the local orientated axis. And now all we have to do to cut out this cube which we created from our bishop is to select the bishop and we want to add a boolean modifier to the bishop itself. We want this to be a difference modifier because we want the difference in the two objects. And we're going to change the option of B mesh to carve, simply because carve is a much cleaner and newer version of the B mesh boolean operations. We will then select the pipette and we'll select the object which we want to cut out from our bishop. And now hopefully the boolean operation should take place. To view this, we can select our cube and push M and we'll move it to another layer. I simply push M, then 2, then enter, and now our cube is still existing but on our second layer. To access this second layer, we can push 2, which will take us to another scene, basically, and then we can open both layers together by pushing Shift and 1, which will give us both layers, our bishop being on layer 1. We can turn off the boolean and subsurface layers by selecting the eyes and the properties. By turning off the boolean operation, we can manipulate the object without being too worried about the processing power and put it in new locations and then turn it back on. And if you want to be able to 3D print your whole chess set, because you can, all of these models are able to be printed, I suggest you 
decrease the overhanging angles as I'm doing here so you don't have to use support material. And if for some reason your boolean modifier is not working, the main reason for that would probably be because you've got double vertices or two sets of vertices on the exact same location. If you push tab to enter your object's edit mode, push A to select all your vertices, then push W and find the option which says remove doubles. By doing this, you should increase your chance of getting a successful boolean operation. You can see the amount of vertices that were deleted through this operation at the top. Please subscribe to stay in touch. There is a lot more for us to cover in the future. And if you support us on Patreon, I'll be able to produce a lot better quality videos and a lot more quickly.